All right, let me just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it up and uh, tell me if that's too loud. Oh, that's perfect. Right? Hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went with the classics, okay? Yes. Then, <laughs> if we were to make this our, if we were actually to make this our theme song, I think it would be ridiculously expensive. Yeah, yeah. But I think maybe we'll be able to get it away with it once and hope they don't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Just once, because... Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they they go after you. Oh yeah, that's the funny thing is they can be okay, and then I'm gonna fade it down. I think that's it. yeah, we'll cut it out right there. That's perfect. That's okay. Perfect. And we'll 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 play the part everybody likes at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and then for sure we'll get sued. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that song too? Just lyrically, it's it's not exactly the right thing, but it's close, right? No, it's it, man. It fits the mood of the day, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure, it's a hell of a song. Yeah, it's, it's on. It's on so many different playlists of mine, because it's on genre playlists. It's of course on an artist playlist. Yeah, and then it'll just be like, if you're listening to the decade, well, of course you're gonna hear that song. Just of course. So it's on multiple yeah. like. Like it's one of the biggest hits of the day. Yeah, and I I don't mind hearing it. It, it, I don't get sick of it, but I get why people are sick of it. I get that they played a lot, but it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So how you been, Jeremy? Oh, man, I've, I've been alive. I'm just uh, <laughs> try, trying to get through yet another week, man. That is all by itself an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> how about you? Everything been good? Uh, life has been good. I, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. It's a, a nice thing happened <laughs> this week. A nice thing happened this week. A courtesy was extended. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, welcome to Good Science, Bad Science. I am your host, Jim Bruce, and this is my co-host. Jeremy Paul. And as you know, what we talk about, uh, uh, free-form kind of talk about what is science, what is not science, or what makes good science. And then, so far, we've barely stayed on topic, but that's fine. <laughs> um, very true, very true. So I, I, I'm gonna. So last week we said we were gonna talk a little bit about pharmaceuticals and stuff, and we will. But I want to bring this up really quick. I want to show everybody at home something. And if you're listening to the audio version of it, I'll tell you what I'm showing you. But um, what I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it up to the camera. Everybody can see that. Does everybody see that? Uh, Jeremy, what is that? That is a tooth. That is a tooth. That is one of my molars. Uh, I had a tooth fall out uh, <laughs> because I'm an old man. And, uh, and because of COVID-19, it was coming out, but it wasn't painful. And I was like, I don't have to go to a dentist. And it was in back. So I thought, okay, nor I don't, I'm not normally that much of a hillbilly, but I guess I will just accept that that tooth is going to go out. <laughs> but I still have it, and it came out perfect. And the reason it came out is because I had my wisdom teeth removed, and that is a neighbor of my wisdom teeth. And it got um. a little bit loosened from when I had my wisdom teeth out. Now, a little bit of uh, trivia about your wisdom teeth that I think people know. Uh, your wisdom teeth are called because they're the last ones to come in. Um, and I think that's the only reason they're called that because they sure ain't smart. <laughs> they, uh, they more or less don't belong in almost any human head. Just about any human head doesn't really have the room to keep them. Yeah. Why the fuck are they there? Well, they're there. They're vestigial. They're yep. a remnant of when you needed them. They're the remnant when you had probably a bigger jaw, you had bigger teeth. You were using your teeth for more things. You uh -huh. were chewing on bone and gristle, and you were probably fighting another dumb primate with them as well. You were trying <laughs> to tear off a nose or some balls, which is what primates do. It's vestigial. And that's interesting. So for people who trouble with understanding the many myriad ways that we know evolution is true, 
Well, Jeremy and myself have unpleasant teeth to tell you that evolution is true. Oh, very much. Uh, I had my all. I had all four of mine removed at the same time. Dude, me too. <laughs> D- awful, awful. Yeah. Um, here, I'll tell you my quick story about getting all four of mine out. Um, so I used to really like Vicodin. Um, and I gotta be <laughs> honest, I still kind of do. I just don't take it anymore, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, and the reason I liked Vicodin is because in America, if you have like a minor inconvenient feeling, there's a doctor somewhere who will give you Vicodin. Right. Uh, and I had some back issues and I got some Vicodin and oh Lordy, did I like it. So I liked it enough. I liked it enough that I realized I better stop taking Vicodin. So, um, cause I don't really want to be addicted as hilarious as that would be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I went and got my teeth, my wisdom teeth removed and they gave me Vicodin and I, and that's the medicine I asked for because I have a lot of allergies. So if I know I can take a thing, I'll say, well, just give me that. Cause I know I won't have a reaction to that. Right. Um, but I, but I was like, what's the least amount you can give me that'll be enough to get me through this. And it was like six pills. So I'm like, cool. I'm not going to abuse six pills. Um, so I went there, the dentist did a really good job of numbing me. And you hear that (laughs) sound of chiseling as they're pulling my, (laughs) um, and as they, all four of them came out, I thought, because I'm dumb, I thought, oh, I guess that wasn't that bad. It doesn't hurt at all. So I got my prescription and I was like, I'm going to go get some ice cream first and then I'll go get my prescription filled. (laughs) 100% true because I'm dumb. Because what I hadn't realized is they had numbed my face so much that I couldn't feel anything. So I was in line at the ice cream store with my friend and I was like, oh, oh no, oh no. And I realized <laughs> that now, so now it was a mad rush to get, I did not get ice cream. It was a mad rush to get to the nearest pharmacy to get in line and go, ah, I, I just, I need this filled. And I'm in fucking pain and I'm just and it's starting to murder, murderous pain. Yeah. So that. When I finally got it, got the Vicodin, I must have looked like an addict. Because, <laughs> uh, 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 and I took it without water. I was just like, uh, uh, I took two, which you're not supposed to, but, and m- my advice, never be behind the pain. I don't know if you know that expression, but <laughs> you gotta be in front of that shit. Uh-huh. I was behind the pain. So it meant I was on fire so i got the goddamn vicodin in me and then i took a third one in the drive on home so (laughs) i only had three left at this point but i was like i don't care i'll figure out something and lord jeremy it was brutal uh well i have a i have a weirder i think a weirder story story than that tell so i had to uh i my my day job uh had i had to go through my medical insurance uh, to figure out where I was going to go. So they sent me to a, uh, a Latino ghetto. Uh, <laughs> when I walked into the office, there were three dudes in wheelchairs sitting out front, uh, in front of the dentist office, like Mexican gangsters in wheelchairs. Uh, so I walk in and I give my information. I had already made my appointment. And they were like, well, you can only do two at a time because it's not safe to do all four. And I was like, well, is it going to cost like double the amount each time I go? They're like, yeah, well, you'll come back, but it'll be twice as much because you have to repay for the the the, anesthe- the anesthesia and all that. I was like, well, what about if I just get all four of them taken out at once? It's like, I don't want to pay for anesthesia twice when I can get them all done once. And they're like, well, we can, we can try that. If it hurts too much, just let us know. So, uh... I couldn't afford to get gas because my my insurance didn't cover the gas. They all, my insurance also didn't cover the good good uh, Novocaine. I had to get some bootleg Novocaine. <laughs> oh. So 
they they thought they numbed me up, but they didn't. Uh, wow. so, so yeah, I felt all of that. <laughs> like it, it was it was excruciating. Wow. And uh, you know how you're supposed to come with somebody and they're supposed to drive you home. Yeah, I went by myself, so uh, I had to drive myself back home. Uh, I, I they didn't even give me a prescription for painkillers. Uh, <laughs> so they gave me the the Novocaine, the like the bootleg Novocaine. They stuffed my mouth full of co- full of cotton. This was in 2009, by the way. So stop stuffed my mouth full of the cotton swab things and told me to bite down for 10 hours. Wow. So for 10 hours, I sat in my room just biting down, trying to stop the bleeding. Wow. I actually took a picture of the inside of my mouth. It was just pouring blood. But I don't even think they tried to suture it up. Wow. They, they just pulled the teeth out. It was like, yeah, that's it. Wow. <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, that's that's my wisdom teeth story. By the way, they didn't let me keep the wisdom teeth. Uh, I was mad yeah, about they, that. They don't. I, I tried to get them to let me have my teeth, too. They won't let you, and it's irritating to me because they're mine. Yeah, came out my fucking body. Yeah, that's... Uh, I paid in blood for them shits, man. Yeah, that's why I'm delighted that I have this molar, because it's it's interesting to me. I have teeth are interesting. Um, fast... Okay, side note, I have a friend named Walker. Have you ever met my friend Walker? I don't know. Okay, so Walker's a big guy. He's 6'2", um, 6'3", very tall guy. Um, uh, athletic. He played a lot of sports. He told me when he goes to the dentist because he does not like the way Novocaine feels. He said even when they just numb his mouth, he feels terrible the whole day because he reacts really strong to the medicine. So yeah. he went to the dentist and he told them, I don't want you to numb my face. I don't want any of that. Just do what you got to do. And they're like, no, you, you honestly, you don't want to do that. You can't handle it. And he goes, I got this. And without anything, he sat there in the chair and he was not lying. They just, and they couldn't believe it. Now, side note, he played professional hockey at one point. So <laughs> he's gotten knocked in the face a few times and he knows what's up. But yeah. he like, everybody's threshold for pain is different. Mine is low. <laughs> I got a real high threshold for pain. Apparently, it's... man. Yeah, not me. Not me. Um, anyway, so I have this molar. And this is what I was thinking about, Jeremy. Uh, mm-hmm. Someday I'm going to die, uh, if there's any justice in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the flesh is, of course, a transitory thing. Or flesh uh, disappears. But a lot of times, not teeth. Yeah. It's a weird thing, like a dinosaur tooth. So a dinosaur bone is not really a bone. It's actually mostly a rock. Uh, It used to be a bone. You know, it got replaced over time with different minerals. It's not what it originally was. Sometimes a dinosaur tooth is a tooth. Yeah. Yeah. It's an actual fucking tooth because that's how much they will, uh, they can preserve. And you grow that goddamn stone in your mouth, which is Uh weird. Concentrated calcium. It is wild that this thing grows that's basically a stone that will outlive you and will outlive generations of things. And now one of my favorite things about teeth Jeremy, is that teeth, uh, prior to, say, the last hundred years, is pretty much what killed most people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Lucy, you're familiar with Lucy, the primate Lucy. Uh Uh-huh. For folks at home who don't know Lucy, she's a very famous little, uh, uh, she might have been Australopithecan, she might have been Homo habilis, I don't really remember, it doesn't really matter. Uh, right. It's a little primate, uh, but a very uh, important discovery because it's a whole skeleton. So they could tell a lot about this particular early primate, uh, and they named her Lucy. Uh, you know what Lucy died of? What? Toothache. <laughs> you know that. 
She died likely of madness. They found her in a riverbed, and there's a very good chance that what happened was she drowned herself trying to find relief. That is plausible. Yep. Plausible, consistent. You think about every tooth trouble you've ever had as a person and how you had a solution for it. They did not have solutions for that before. They just, not at all. And the infection, the, the crazy thing about like today, let's say you get a tooth infection and you don't take care of it, you could still die from it if, you're, if you just don't like going to the dentist. Yeah, I had a friend, uh, my friend's sister died of it uh, at the age of 38. Yeah. I know all too well. Did it go to her heart or her brain? Heart. Oh, yeah. It'll mess you up and it's crazy to me. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you want to tell me that was part of God's plan. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's so ludicrous. Teeth, man. Uh, the science of uh, paleo, uh, paleontology, the p science of evolution, so much of it is about teeth. Yeah. So much of it is about the, the teeth that survived and what was it and where, and no, you know, little bits of teeth that pointed in the direction of, oh, there might be another kind of primate out there because we haven't seen a tooth like this. Sometimes they've been notoriously wrong and identified a pig instead. Yeah. But that happens. Like you don't know if somebody got buried with their cat or not. Yeah. <laughs> so the bones mixed up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre. And you know, you got your little teeth here. Let's see, what else? What else would you say that we have that's vestigial that you can think of? The tail. Tail, we do have a vestigial. Yeah, you're right. What other part of our uh, body? Like, uh, of course, the appendix. Yeah. Virtually uh -oh. purpless. Um, mm. the I thought of one today that I had never thought of before that I what? think is vestigial. Okay, you could consider it a weird sort of leftover. Uh, <clears throat> there's almost no point to toenails. And me and my uh. friend were discussing why, why do we have toenails? And it occurred to me, because I understand why kitty, so kitty cats have nails on their back legs, but they fight with them. Mm -hmm. You know, a kitty cat will roll over on its back and it will fight with them. Right. And yes, we will kick things, but we don't get a lot of action from those claws, right? <laughs> right. So I got to imagine that <laughs> That's left over from uh, one of our early ancestors when we were either living in trees or knuckle walking. It had to be from knuckle walking, right? Yeah. Like it's, I think there probably is a, uh, a reason for toenails. Like it's basically our talons because it's not like we're supposed to be wearing shoes anyway. Right, right. See, I thought of that too, and but my friend rightly pointed out he's because there are uh, members of our species right now who are still walking around having never worn shoes. I can't remember where they are, but there's this tribe you're not allowed to visit because they're living the same way they have for hundreds of years, and yeah. they, and they have um, whoever wants to, by the way, look it up. It's kind of entertaining. Missionaries have gone there and gotten killed. And the government yeah. has said, well, you shouldn't have gone there because literally you were not going to put this dude on trial. You shouldn't have been there. Right. It they, happened uh, last year. Yep. They've tried to, you, with arrows, take down planes and whatever. They don't want nothing to do. They apparently know the rest of the world is out here. They know that much. But they yeah. decided, no. Um, which means they're very smart. <laughs> Yeah, they, they know exactly what they want. It's a, it's a, not, I think, I don't think, uh, I think it's not that far from the Solomon Islands. Yeah. Or somewhere, somewhere close to like that area. It, and fascinatingly enough, because you have such a small gene pool there, right? Yeah. So their, their gene pool, of course, is very small. First of all, if I did go there and that missionary is a jerk, because you could kill them so easily by just breathing yeah that it's just so irresponsible to go there one sneeze 
one sneeze and it's done because there's just all this kind of stuff but they're all very short too they're all they you know they're all you know a five footer there is their center you know yeah <laughs> their center <laughs> they're tiny and of course um but of course that's a um i don't know that's a that's a i don't know a eurocentric thing for me to think because they're not really tiny they're the height they're supposed to be you know yeah, for where they are yeah yeah they're they're their average height is just uh it's it's fascinating though so my we, we were talking about them and i'm like well so they don't have shoes so maybe they need toenails and my friend said well no what for you're they're still not fighting with their toenails they're not climbing with their toenails they're not gripping anything with their toenails. You know, these are claws for a kind of fighting we don't do anymore. Yeah. So, you no, know, they're just fastidial. And it occurred to me because one of my toenails is missing because I've been a working man most of my life and a brick fell on it a long time ago. Ah. And, uh, it's just gone. And I'm none the worse for wear except a person with a particular fetish won't like me. That's it. <laughs> Because uh, it's a pretty gangly looking toe. Um, but I, I can't think of it. Let's research it for next episode. Because I'm going to go on record as saying my opinion is there's no real use of human toenails currently. That it's a leftover. Do you think fingernails are the same? Not quite. Because so... My friend did say, he goes, every now and then I scratch my right foot with my left foot. And I was like, okay, well, I do that too. I think the, it scratches an itch and yeah. it's good for removing a bug, I guess. So I feel, let's look at both because I feel like our fingernails have modest amount of value. I mean, you think about women, fingernails and toenails and some dudes, of course, is all aesthetics. Yeah. Well, and that's what we view it as anyway. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Because we're, we're not a digging culture. Right. Like, there are cultures that actually still dig. Like, there's, oh. Brazilian, there's Brazilian tribes that, that dig. Yeah, and you know what? You'd need those nails probably for that, wouldn't you? Yeah, and they would probably use their hands and their feet. Okay. All right, let's find out because it feels vestigial to me, but maybe it isn't. Maybe there's definitely a uh, law of diminishing returns at the very least. Yeah. We don't use it the way that we used to. Doesn't, doesn't serve as deep a purpose like our hair, you know, progressively less and less hair. Yeah. Um, Dep that also depends on where you live. Yeah, absolutely. Like if it, it, it's still like if you're in the Caucasus Mountains somewhere, you're probably hairier than you are if you're in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, yes. it's it's that way. Oh yeah, and of course it makes perfect sense because if you were sub-Saharan Africa, you just better not have that much hair anymore, right? Exactly. You ha you need enough to hold on to your sweat, so uh -huh. pull you down, but you don't need a Robin Williams amount necessarily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the fur coat that he used to wear. <laughs> yeah, the natural fur coat. The, fit, the Fisher King was a uh, was a very traumatizing movie. <laughs> so, what else? What else? Uh, let me think. Um, uh, hair. Okay, hair. Uh, toenails. A uh, little place for your tail. Um, appendix. Yeah, the appendix. I still have mine, so I'm... Nice. Me too, me too. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, like I, I see people go through it and I'm like, well, how would I know that it's happening to me? Because <laughs> like, yeah. like my high tolerance for pain is probably not doing me any good here. Yeah. Uh, I just have to, I guess, wait on myself throwing up or something. Yeah. I haven't thrown up since I was 13. I don't know how this fucking shit works. You uh, know what? That, that'd be another good topic for next time too is we'll look up... I bet you we got some other like muscles that are barely used anymore, uh, you know, for motions that we don't make as much or even at all. Yeah. You know, your knuckle dragon, you know, walking on your knuckles was one thing and we don't do that so much anymore. 
I'm sure some of us do. We've all, <laughs> we've all been drinking. Um, uh, related to last episode, um, actually, no, let me throw it to you before I bring up my dumb topics. What's okay. on your mind science-wise? Science-wise, um, I, I can't, what was the, uh, well, while, re while researching the, the big, the pharmaceutical thing, right? Yeah, bust into that if you want to. Well, I was, I was researching that and, uh, researching, looking stuff up. I right. was looking stuff up. I can't do research right now. Uh, but when I was, when I, cause I'm on three medications, right? right. So what I was looking, looking up, what, what came to me scientifically were the science side effects of medicine. We're going to, I guess we're going to get into that somehow. Yeah. But, uh, the side effects of certain medicines, I, I don't get. I don't get those side effects that they say that everybody should get. The right. only side effect that I've ever gotten is heart palpitations. <laughs> and, uh, well, no, heart palpitations, paranoia, and a cough, which is why you've heard me coughing, because I'm on a, a drug called Lisinopril, okay. uh, which... Okay which uh, is for, for cholesterol, but the side effect is persistent cough, uh, which is a dangerous <laughs> thing nowadays because the, uh, the, the pandemic that we have, yeah. the, uh, one of the symptoms is persistent cough. Yes. <laughs> so like, everybody's been looking at me while I'm coughing maniacally out here. Uh, like, what's wrong with him? Like, it's fucking drugs, man. Yep. It's drugs. I don't usually, by the way, I don't usually get the flu vaccine because usually um, I'm too busy or whatever. I, that, it's, it's free. I got it this year because the last thing you oh. want, I got it because as much as you can, you need to avoid the flu for multiple reasons. One is that the symptoms are easy to confuse with COVID-19. Uh -huh. Two, if you get a really bad flu, it compromises the exact part of your immune system that COVID then kicks the shit out of. Right. So you don't, so imagine you could easily this season get the flu with a COVID kicker. Yeah. Um, so this year, even though uh, it makes a statistical difference, it's a, it's a small percentage that it actually prevents, but over, of course, over a population, it makes a huge difference, but um, damn. Like, ha how many drugs have you taken, like, uh, as far as pharmaceuticals, uh, that, that have given you a negative reaction? Um, let's see. Uh, Vicodin was awesome. Um, but, mm -hmm. but I did have the effect of, um, and I think this happens with a lot of opiates that when you take them for whatever reason, you take them for pain, take them for fun. It doesn't matter why you took them. Uh -huh. But the next day, I just feel like I got beat up. Well, after taking Vicodin, it's the next day when it's getting out, when it's out of my system, I just feel like I got the shit kicked out of me. And it's like not anywhere in specific on my body. And like my joints feel like, like they're sand in them, like they're just kind of creak. It's, I don't like it, that part. Right. Um, and uh, I don't actually, honestly, I don't think I've ever had a really major bad effect from medication. Um, I did have to be on prednisone and I had to have other medications to take me off of prednisone uh, because you can't just stop taking it. Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you're apparently not supposed to just stop. You're supposed to lean back because it's uh, something can happen to you if you don't ease your body off of it. Well, I guess that should happen to me because uh, like I took two, I took a pill two days in a row, and I started waking up like that's the one that had me paranoid. I woke up at two in the morning, like the third day, and my heart was beating out of my chest, and it felt like it was rolling. 
And I thought I was about to die, so I wrote a, a, a letter. Uh, and I was sending out emails to people, and I, like the paranoia hit. I was like, oh, I'm about to die. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like, I seriously thought I was dying in my bed. I, I sent out like four emails, uh, like, hey, this is my last will, and blah, blah, blah. And, I sent my I sent my book to my friend James. You know James. Yeah. I was like, look, uh, here's my notes. Uh, finish my book up. <laughs> like, this, is, this is what needs to happen in the book. I yeah. sent him that, and then I fell back asleep and woke up. I was like, yeah, I'm never taking this shit ever again. That's funny. Yeah. Well, and I, understandably, you might have even done the right thing because you know your own body. You're you're having an actual reaction. So fuck. Yeah. Yeah. The um, doctor, when I told him about it, he was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, I've, I've probably never heard that before. So uh, that's that's a new one. It's like, yeah, I, I have weird reactions to medicine. So, uh, all right. So easing into medicine, I'm going to touch base on a topic we talked about last week, but uh -huh. that I forgot about, which is uh, we talked about lead poisoning last week. Do you remember yeah. that? We talked about lead poisoning. And there was a thing that I mentioned that I wanted to get more specific on, which is what lead does in your body to mess you up. Here's uh -huh. what it does. Uh, there are other heavy metals in your body that you need that do a variety of jobs and lead to your body looks like those other metals. Yeah. So what happens is your body goes, oh, here's this thing and I know what it's for and it ain't what it's for. And it can... Um, jack up the firing of neurons, which is why it leads to madness. It can do stuff to your heart. But what it basically does is it's this little infiltrator that your body thinks is something other than what it is because to your body, it is the same shape because it has, and it, and it is very, on a, on a molecular level, it is very similar. It's a very <laughs> similar thing. So that's what happens. That's why it causes madness. Then it made me think, so in a similar vein, that's essentially what most say viruses do. Most viruses trick your body and they basically co-opt a bit of, of uh, mechan they basically co-opt the engineering of uh, one of your cells or a multiple cells of yours and say, hey, instead of making what you thought you were making, let's make this instead. Yeah. And so the way uh, vaccines work a lot of times, particularly like say the flu vaccine, is they take uh, a dead version of the um, virus, the flu virus, inject your body into it so that your body goes, okay, I see what this is. So that if you get the real thing, ideally what has happened is now your body knows what it is. Yeah. That's what a vaccine is supposed to do. That's, that's why and how it works. Um, <laughs> people who uh, are anti-vaccine uh, do two things stupid. One is, um, well, number one, number one is they really rely on a debunked, uh, paper that the doctor himself recanted on. But the other thing I often think is they also muddy the water for people who have legitimate concerns about vaccines. For example, I have a friend who is a parent and they're concerned not with whether or not their kids should get vaccines. They're concerned with the vaccine schedule. And they're like, it seems like a lot to put into my child all at once. And is there a way to not give this many shots at this time? So they object, not object is, is a strong word, but they question the uh, schedule. And I've heard multiple parents say that. And it's a reasonable question to ask. The problem is when you're a parent who says, hey, I get a question about a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like every other dipshit who just is crazy. Yeah. So you make it awful for them because there are things you should ask your doctor. Like I, Very much. you know, they have a, that schedule is the schedule they've come up with is their best idea of the schedule. It might not be right. Um, it might be, but you, but at the very least, you have a right to ask as a parent. However, if you're saying vaccines don't work or uh, cause autism, 
you're a fucking loony. Uh -huh. And if you're saying, I'm concerned because it has this ingredient that vaccines haven't had in 50 years, come on. <laughs> um, so no. that's, that's an introduction to sort of as we get into pharmaceuticals. Well, uh, as, as far as like the, the whole vaccines go, uh, this actually relates to something I was uh, writing about in my book. There's a, there's a, there's a portion uh, of history that people don't know about. It's the uh, invention, like how smallpox was cured in the States. Uh, do you know about the story, right? Yes, but go ahead. So there was a, a slave who, uh, who had to, who had to tell his, his owner, who was a minister or, or a preacher of some sort, uh, that that uh, this is we've cured we was we had this cured in Africa already we already knew how to get get rid of this and so the preacher didn't believe him he's like no you just take a little piece of the sore and you cut yourself and you and you wipe it onto the sore and that's how we inoculate ourselves well he didn't say inoculate but that's how we we got rid of it ourselves we we use that and that's it was a, the slave was a Onesimus. Uh, that was his name. Uh, I must confess that I'm not familiar with this story, so uh, that's cool. Keep going. Yeah. yeah so he, uh, like he, he told the told the minister how to do it, and then the minister did this. They had some people die, of course, because it's it's a new treatment. Uh, but that's how it got rid of, like it got rid of in the United States in the beginning. Like that's how most white people were inoculated against it, but of course they weren't inoculating. The natives, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, or the other slaves, really. Yeah. Uh, but like, so Africans had already cured it <laughs> in Africa See, for the most part. That's a great. We talked about this before. Um, uh, bears and uh, alcoholic peaches. Remember, I talked about that. Uh huh. So you know, peaches that ferment, and bears love it, and they will kill you, and they love getting drunk off of you know, alcohol peaches. Yeah. And of course, that's how alcohol gets discovered. Alcohol gets discovered. Is, alcohol is not an invention. Alcohol is a discovery. Yeah. Um, now, wine is an invention because it's, it's okay, now, and it's like uh, getting, uh, inoc you, you know, the hair of the dog that bit you, getting inoculated by isn't an invention, it's a discovery which then points to an invention, which is a vaccine. Yeah. Which is how science, of course, works. Is you're like, okay, well, this, this thing works. Like aspirin is a root. <laughs> but you don't take it like that. So, by the way, I fucking love aspirin. I get so many headaches. It's the best thing for you. Yeah, and it's well, actually- Well, maybe really aspirin good. anyway. Yes, and it's, a, it's decent for your heart when you get to be an older fella. Um, don't I do it. Uh, <laughs> um, but of course, that's that's where it points. It points you in that direction. You're like, okay, so they got this this cure, and of course, it's a it's not a perfect cure. But damn it, if it's not in the right direction, then you make this vaccine, you refine it. Oh, that's cool. I did not know that story, Jeremy. That's awesome. Oh well, yeah. That, like my my twelve year eleven to twelve years of researching for this fucking book that I've been writing for 11 or 12 years has led me to a lot of history and knowledge of this kind of stuff. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, one of my favorite things, by the way, that pharmaceutical companies do, this is one of my favorite things they do. Mm -hmm. And this is why you gotta, this is by the way, why the American medical system is fucking broken and why it doesn't really work and why capitalism does not really work in medicine. Because well, here's the argument. The argument is you need capitalism because why else would people make medicine? Well, first of all, they make medicine for the same reason they always have, because they like to cure diseases. Right. Let me tell you what capitalism does to pharmaceuticals. It doesn't cure diseases. Here's what capitalism does to pharmaceuticals. It gets a pharmaceutical company to take something like Vicodin and try to make a new version of it so that they can have the patent on it and charge you too much for it. Yeah. And it's not that they think we need to improve Vicodin. That ain't it. It's not Vicodin isn't working. It's that uh, 
Vicodin's now $10 or $5 with a copay. We need something that we can charge way more. And then we need to send the cute representative, which they fucking do. They said some <laughs> hot little, they do this. They said yeah. some fucking hot little lady to the goddamn doctor's office with swag and free crap. And, oh, you know what would be great for your patients? First of all, your finger would be great for my pussy, but these pills would be great for, nah, they probably don't literally do that, but who knows what they fucking do. Uh, and they go and they just basically talk your doctor into deciding that, hey, wouldn't it be better if you took this pill? Yeah. It's all jackassery. It's all jackassery. Well, it's how I almost went blind uh, back in August. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Another horrible reaction, because instead of giving me the cream, which is what they should have done from the beginning, they gave me these uh, antibiotic eye drops because that's what they was recommended. Yeah. And that shit, yeah, that shit burned my, uh, the whites of my eyes and had, had me, had my, the whites of my eyes covering my, my cornea and I, I couldn't see. So yeah. all they needed to do was give me the cream. Two weeks of the cream after that, and I was finally able to see. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> I still got a little bit of it left just in case. Like, hey, man, fuck it. if this shit ever pops back up, I'm never going to fucking uh, the 24-hour urgent care ever again. Right. <laughs> wow. That's... See, and that's – so I'm sure the cream, I'm sure it does something, right? Yeah. Maybe it works for a certain percentage of people. What it really works for is it works for the pharmaceutical rep who wanted to sell however many he wanted to sell. Uh -huh. That's what's I was reading. Uh, we in the United States, we are in the top uh, ninety percent of uh, medical uh, knowledge and quality. We have some of the best doctors in the world. Oh, certainly, yeah. We have third world access to medicine yeah that's not even a joke we have third world access i have i have health insurance and i don't have absolute access to <laughs> the kind that you get in in the nightmare that is free medicine in other countries oh my god would you want to be in canada where yes yes you fucking liars it's, oh, it's a six month wait to this. Like, yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll, yeah. I'll wait. There are two, <laughs> yeah. Two things are number one, it ain't really a six month wait. That's a lie. Even right. if it was, it's better than the uh, never. Yeah. It's better than the no, never, you can't afford it. Yeah, it's better than the GoFundMe waiting, uh, <laughs> waiting <Yeah>. period. <laughs> uh, a Republican, um, a, a person who works for a Republican senator um, said to one of their constituents that they were talking about how they were get, potentially going to lose their health insurance and didn't, couldn't afford chemo anymore. And, and the person on the phone with this, at the senator's office said, well, you, you got to figure it out. I mean, because, you know, it's an expense like anything. And, and, <laughs> and the thing was, they got in trouble. They got in trouble for saying out loud what Republicans believe in private. Yeah, that's is, generally how everything goes anyway. That says that sucks for you. It sucks to be you, but <laughs> but you know what? If you can't afford the luxury that is chemotherapy. Luxury. Yeah, <laughs> and that's how they view it. They view it as a luxury good in the sense that if you can't afford it, for them it's like, you know, if you. It's like cable TV. Not everybody can afford cable TV. Right. So if you can't afford cable TV, you don't get cable TV. If you can't afford chemotherapy, you don't get to keep mom. <laughs> <laughs> mom is a luxury. Yeah. <laughs> it's a luxury. And, you know, maybe if dad worked a little harder, you know, so when you get remarried, dad, uh, Get a get a healthier mom, Dad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, like I I did a lot of of I can't even I I 
I'm not so keen on calling it research. Because as me and you have, are, are both aware of, you can't call it research if you're not going to the library and reading through a bunch of different books. And, you know, uh, like there's a, there's actually a, a thing going on right now where the cops are looking for a dark-skinned male. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm going to keep my ass in the house. <laughs> so, <clears throat> shit. Yeah, so, like, you know, they're very discerning, uh, you know, these cops, so I'm sure they'll be very careful. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they're, uh, they're going to start shooting people again. And I'm like, hey, man, all right, just not me. Uh, you know, but I just, I want the damn cops to sometime recognize, they're like, oh, you know what? Uh, a lot of us are getting shoot, shot by white guys. Because I honestly think the solution, Jeremy, to all of our trouble is if the cops just start start willy nilly shooting white guys, it'll solve the problem. It uh, really will because all they have to do is get a little more willy nilly with white guys, and then everybody in Congress will go, "We've got a problem." Well, that's I guess that will work because it worked with the opioid crisis. Yes, uh, it, yes. It, it wasn't really an opioid crisis for the last what uh, four four or five thousand years. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like. If you're if you're on crack, you're a you're a criminal degenerate addict. Yeah. If you're uh, on opiates, hey, you know you're just a victim of your body chemistry and you need help. Uh huh. You, your doctor did this to you. Yeah. Uh, it, not <laughs> only that, if you sell crack, you're a dealer. If uh, you're a doctor who overprescribed opiates, you know, well, we need to work on the opiate protocol because you made a mistake. Uh huh. You're, Never mind. you're not a yeah. S sending like ten million pills to a city with a population of ten thousand, and you're like, okay, well, maybe there's a problem. <laughs> and no other surrounding cities, all yep. cornfields around you. Yep. <laughs> that's and, the. And listen, I, yeah, I'm like torn the, because I love opiates. <laughs> Well, it's like I meant like they're opioids, uh, what, uh, Hippocrates, right? Yeah. That, that was the first real prescriber of, of opioids. Yeah. Of, of opium. And, you know, that, that's Greece. <laughs> so that's how long I get. I guess you could say Greece is mostly white people. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's how long white people have been uh, abusing opioids in <laughs> 300 yeah. BC. Yeah. <laughs> Although that's an interesting topic that we're going to talk about next time. That's an interesting topic. So in ancient Greece, they were Greeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. And in, in ancient Ireland, they were the Irish. Uh -huh. And in, uh, if you were in Egypt, you were Egyptian. It is uh -huh. actually fairly modern. It is actually a fairly modern thing that uh, Greeks and the Irish and the Scottish, it's fairly modern that they became white. Yeah. And it's fairly modern that it is actually, it's funny because we think of ourselves as progressing, 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 and we do, but then some dipshittery gets in the mix <laughs> and suddenly, like, like here's, a, here's a statement. Tell me if you agree with the statement. Huh? Racism, racism is fucking real as the day is long racism right. is brutal and real but race isn't very true like the the hatred the vitriol the division that's just, that's a real goddamn human experience over yeah. a thing that's not real this that's is a this is also a conversation i have with people because I try to get them to use the correct words, and they never do. Like, they, they say racism, and I always try to correct my friends, like, it's not racism, it's ethnocentrism. Yeah. You're using, like, people are using the wrong words, and, like, because it's, it's dealing with your ethnicity. It's not dealing with your race. Human is the actual, I guess, race as, as we are. The thing is, the racism is real, just race isn't. Uh, right. The, the, you know, and... Trying to get some, I mean, if a person's already, listen, if a person's already stupid enough to be that way, hoping they'll use the right word is a pretty long hope. Yeah, but it's it's the only thing I can correct 
if I can get my friend, like my friends back home, if I can get them to use the correct word and they start using that correct word, then maybe I can get them to start thinking like step by step, like, hey, this is- You know what, this, you're right. This, this, power, of, this. power of fucking language, you're right. Because, because using, because when you use, uh, the word you use carves a place inside your head. Yeah. And if you use the right word or put aside the idea of right or wrong, but just use a different word, you'll think different. You know, uh -huh. I, uh, I, as an example, my, um, my brother-in-law is from Pakistan. Um, you know, I married my sister is very lovely man from Pakistan. He's a Muslim. Um, and she is now too. Um, and he speaks Urdu. Um, oh. and it's a very be beautiful language. I have no shot at ever speaking. Uh, <laughs> I, I had many lovely conversations with him in English. He's, he knows so many languages, you know, and he knows them well. And when I speak to him in, uh, English, he is a particular kind of person. I've witnessed him speaking in Urdu with his friends. And he is a different kind of gregarious. He is a, he's a different person. Yeah. He is fun. And I, uh, when you would hear Kobe, who spoke fluent Italian, um, when you would see Kobe being interviewed by an Italian um, uh, reporter, um, and he would talk with his hands, uh -huh. and you saw Kobe speaking Italian, you realized, well, that's a different Kobe than I've been listening to yeah because that's italian kobe right that's kobe uh speaking the cultural because speaking the cultural truth of that language well it's code switching yeah but like, it's everybody code switches. yeah but it's subconscious because he's not going oh i gotta do this no that's just who he is right that's just who he is it's just and, like when i talk to my friends back home I, I talk to, like, back home in Illinois. I don't want people watching this thinking I'm from Africa. Uh, <laughs> back home in uh, Nairobi. No, no, uh, Illinois. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I talk to my friends back home that I grew up with, I I tend to start speaking how I spoke yeah. growing up. Yeah, you didn't grow up in some civilized place like Africa. You grew up in uh, <laughs> Illinois, which is a shit keep. Yeah, I, I, grew I, up in I love Illinois, but Lord. the projects of Illinois, of Peoria, Illinois, and it's not so. There's a whole different dialect that I use when I'm that I'm not using it anywhere else. When I uh, when I was learning Japanese back in college, I didn't talk like I was back in Peoria. I was right. <laughs> like that's the other thing when you when you speak a different language, you usually speak that language respectfully. Yeah, unless you're uh, incredibly fluent, like like Kobe was with Italian. And like, uh, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Luka Doncic is with his Spanish. Like he's like different people that speak different languages. They, they code switch to be more respectful of the person that they're speaking yes. to. Yes, absolutely. Because this is, these are the cultural idioms that go along with speaking this language. Yeah. Um, my brain just won't do it. Um, I, uh, I've studied lots of languages and tried um, and I know that the it's probably a psychological barrier, but the biggest thing is I can never get to the point where I'm thinking in the other language. Every now and then, yeah, every now and then I'll catch myself speaking a little bit of Spanish and thinking in Spanish, and it delights me when it happens. Because <laughs> I, re I realize, oh, that took. But it's the smallest amount. Like I couldn't get anywhere really you know, I'm sure I could find a brothel, but <laughs> but I yeah. like to think no matter where I was, I could find a brothel. They uh, like I, I've had dreams in Japanese. That's that's fun. Where I'm speaking in Japanese and I'm listening and I'm trying, like my brain is working. And then I wake up and I try to do it, and my brain's like, no, no, your tongue's not gonna work here. But <laughs> I have <laughs> dreams. This is the dumbest thing that'll happen to me in a dream is, is I'll be dreaming that I'm at a concert and I'm playing piano and I'm, I'm just playing a song and I'll wake up and for a good three hours in the morning, 
I'm pretty sure I can play piano. <laughs> <laughs> and it isn't until I'm, I'm eating breakfast, I'll be eating breakfast. And I mean, I'm wide awake now. And I'm like, I can't play fucking piano. <laughs> yeah, because you don't, you don't have a muscle memory. It's just your brain is telling you these are the keys you play, but your fingers won't allow you to play it because the muscle memory is not there. Oh, there's no way my brain knows which ones either. My brain <laughs> just making it up. I never studied piano, just in my stupid dream. I'm, and in my dream, this is honestly what has happened multiple times, is I'm just clawing at the piano, but all this nice music coming out because in my dumb brain, I'm like, yeah, that's how you play piano. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, I'm like halfway through my damn breakfast, and I'm like, you can't play piano. <laughs> you literally never took one lesson. Right. You never tried. <clears throat> The only thing you've done, and I can say this honestly, I've seen people play piano. That's it. You're right. I've sat next to somebody playing a piano. Yes. Oh, Lord. All right. So <clears throat> let, next week, we're going to delve into the very soft, easy to talk about topic of the origins of racial identity. Yeah. But uh, there's a thing here. We were talking about... Um, the, the topic of medicine, right? Yes. There's three things I want to get out uh, about this. The oldest, uh, the oldest medical company uh, in the world is Merck, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, let me look. I want to look this up because they're, they're major. They, they, they have 6.2 billion. I wrote this down. They, wrote, they had 6.2 billion in income last year. Wow. Like just in profit. Uh, and their major uh, product are, is inhalers, like asthma inhalers, right? So there's that. Um, Pfizer, their their major their major uh, major product, as we all know, well at least me and you know, dick pills. They uh <clears throat> they are the creators, well the proprietors of Viagra. Right. <clears throat> so their their stock price is at 35 bucks a share. The highest it's ever been uh, is $50, which is when Viagra came out. <laughs> so yeah. there's that. And the third thing, the uh, outside of GlaxoSmithKline, which I don't, I don't, I don't think you want to get into because their medicines fight parasites, really. Yeah, uh, right. But uh, the most important company as far as pharmaceutical go, pharmaceuticals go is Gilead. Now, I bring this up, I, I, I bring this up because this is something I've been paying attention to for the better part of 11 years. There was a man that I knew whose name was Pat, uh, Pat Sicoria. He's dead now. Uh, at least I think he is because I haven't heard from him in two years. Uh, so uh, he was like last time I talked to him, he was 87 years old. Okay. Uh, okay. But he was a he worked for Gilead Sciences for about 30 years, right? Uh, or some 20 or 30 years, I think that's one or the other. Uh, when they retired, when he retired, they gave him a watch, a gold watch. So long time employee. He told me uh, not to tell this story until after he was dead, which is why I'm like, hey. Uh, I'm hoping he's I, I don't hope he's dead but I'm I'm pretty sure he is so I can tell the story um, in 2009 he told me put every dime that I have into Gilead Sciences I didn't have any money at the time the reason I was supposed to start investing in Gilead, Gilead Sciences was because as he told me they were developing the cure for hepatitis C a hepatitis C vaccine and the cure for HIV. Oh. The top, at the time, their stock price was $32 a share. In 2016 or 2017, their stock price was $120 a share because they were in phase two of clinicals for the HIV drug. Oh, and they had just released their hepatitis C drug. Damn. So their hepatitis C vaccine has been released Nobody knows that they, I guess some people know that they're they're still on phase, I think they're on phase three now of clinicals 
for the HIV drug, which is a cure. Wow. So right now their stock price is actually back down to $66 a share. I'm guessing because everybody's stock price is going down right now. Yeah. But uh, it's way higher than Pfizer. It's, be it's better than Merck. It's better than uh, Eli Lilly. It's better, well, not Eli Lilly, uh, GlaxoSmithKline. It's better than a lot of these other pharmaceutical companies that aren't working on the HIV drug. Wow. So HIV is basically one company company away from being cured. That'd be bomb. That'd be cool. And that's that's why when you said pharmaceutical companies, I was like, oh, I get to talk about Gilead Sciences now. That's awesome. <laughs> so, like, that's that's the one thing. Yeah, they they work on liver diseases, liver function, uh, and every every success that they have in clinicals their stock price goes up uh, at like just shoots up to like over a hundred and then they just split. As soon as they get to like a hundred or some dollars, they split. So their stock price, their stock is lucrative. And I wish I would have had any money back in 2009 when he told me, because yeah, I would yeah. be a very wealthy man right now. Damn. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, it's, it's cool that you could have been. It would have been cooler if you were. <laughs> yeah. uh, side note, uh, I think he was hitting on me, and I'm not sure of it. Uh, he used to tell me about the women he would have sex with. Yeah, I, I went to this massage parlor, that kind of thing. He was an 80-year-old man telling me about his trips to massage parlors. And, uh, <laughs> but he also one time, uh, he's, he was telling me about, uh, uh, what was it? Like me and him, we were riding around in his car, and he was like, hey, you want to listen to music? So he puts in the music, like his, like a cassette tape into his cassette deck. Then, keep in mind, he could have had a CD player, but he had a cassette deck. Put a tape in, and it was the Righteous Brothers uh, singing uh, old, <laughs> Unchained Melody. And I looked at him, I, like, <laughs> I looked, I was like, uh, is this a date? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's two, two dudes listening to Unchained Melody. This doesn't look right to me. It doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> That's a great song. <laughs> it's a great song, but it's not one I want to listen to while riding around in a car with another dude. Especially an 80 year old. I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I like the, like, the Righteous Brothers, but uh, yeah. no, no. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap it up. I got to get up at three in the morning. Yeah, I got to get up at six. Nice. Um, yeah, so let's, that's awesome. <clears throat> if they cure AIDS, that would be great. Once they do, I'm just going to get it to have it once. <laughs> just to have it now. Because then now, and then it's nothing. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> just raw dogging everybody. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be playing some Righteous Brothers for you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, this is not the Righteous Brothers, but it is still a pretty song. Let's do everybody's favorite part. Hey! And there it is. Yeah, that's the part where you can't get idiots to not sing it. <laughs> <laughs> you almost caught me singing it. I don't right? want to get copyrighted on this. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody. We will see you next time. <laughs>